Hey gang, it's Jason with Wired to Fish, and we're continuing our series on painting jig heads, um, pouring, painting, baking, the whole step to make them at home. And as you can see, we've been out here in the garage, out in the man cave, doing this for a while. That rack you see there, that's just something I built. Um, those are just one by sixes and a dowel rod that I cut into three pieces, drilled holes that match the size of the rod, glued them in place, and now I've got a rack that's a great... Um, place to hang jigs after I paint them uh, and after I maybe bake them so it's just a great staging area for when you're making jigs at home um, I use it a lot and it's real handy um, but uh, you know part of this you know, we've been covering obviously is pouring the jigs then you've got to paint them and then you've got to bake them you can see in that toaster oven back there and so we went through pouring them in our last video in this video we're going to go through all the things you need and how to paint them. And what we start with here is our paint source, or our heat source, excuse me. The, um, you can use what I use. This is just a standard heat gun. You can find them at pretty much any hardware store, um, usually around the paint section. And then I use a fluid bed. A lot of people still just dip the paint out of the cup. You can see that cup in the background, but this fluid bed is actually hooked to an aerator like you'd use uh, in a fish tank. And it's got a valve here that controls how much air flows into the cup. But basically, the cup has a filter on the bottom of it. Um, we pour our powder paint in there, and the air goes into the cup, and it flows up through that filter. And you see how that paint's bubbling there. We can actually pick the cup up. See how it swishes around? It looks like fluid in there, even though that's powder. Um, that's where the cup gets its name. It's fluid bed. What that does is it keeps the paint nice and fluffed and real light so that when we run our jig through there it goes on the jig real evenly it's not going to clump up and you're not going to get a big thick part of paint in one part of the jig and not the other um, you know a lot of people still do it this way you know they take the paint out of the cup they pour it in another little container and they just take the jig and they swish it through there after they've got it through their heat source so you're going to heat it on the heat gun for 10 or 15 seconds however long it takes depending on the size of the jig then you're going to take and run it through the cup. And the way it was explained to me was, think of a bird in a bird bath. If you've ever seen them, they stick their head down in the water and they kind of shake themselves real violently to get all the excess water off. You want to do the same thing with powder paint because you want the lightest amount of paint on the jig you can get because the thicker it is, the more problems you'll have when you go to bake it and make that paint real hard. So you want the thinnest layer that covers the jig completely. Well, let's get into doing it here. Um, this will be a wide shot. We're just going to hide. The, we're going to heat the jig um, with our heat source, and that's a three-eighth ounce jig. So it's you know I'm going to do it for a 12 or 15 count, and then I'm going to take and dip it through the paint in the fluid bed. And after we think we've got it sufficiently heated, we dip it through there. Now see how it's nice and shiny. That's what you want. Powder paint when it adheres to a very hot lead jig like that will get a real glossy finish. That means it's gone on there getting it. It may even smoke a little bit. That's probably means the jig was just a little bit too hot. But what I take now is that's just nothing more than a piece of copper wire. I found a gauge of copper wire that was the exact width of the eyelet of these jigs. And I take and I push that through there. And when you do, it'll grab a clump of that um, powder paint while it's still hot and push it out of the eyelet. And it'll actually harden on the end of that copper wire. And you can just take and peel it off and then... I put the jig back in the heat source, kind of clears off any little strings you might have from pushing that out of the eyelet. So you get a nice shiny finish and a clear eye, and you basically have painted a jig. We'll do another one here. Again, you know, 12 to 15 maybe on a 3 8 ounce jig, maybe more, maybe less, depending on your heat source. I mean, you can get those uh, Benzolite torches from Walmart or hardware stores, and they heat them a little bit faster. You just got to be careful not to mount, melt the lead. Now, see, that one's not as shiny. So that means the head wasn't quite hot enough, but you can put it back in the heat source and it'll kind of help melt that powder around the jig. The only problem is you want to make sure you got enough paint on there. Sometimes if you put the head down in the paint and it's not hot enough, you're not going to get enough paint on the jig to cover the whole jig. So that one looks okay after we heated it again in the heat source. So we clear the eyelet out with our piece of copper wire, um, pick off the end of the stuff and we've got a nice clean jig with a clear eye. It's real important to have those eyelets clear before you bake. If you bake them with an eyelet full of paint, you'll never be able to get it out of there. It's not like those little crappie jigs where you can just punch them out because those haven't been baked. This is a much lighter jig, so I might only do it for a 9 or 12 count. Swish it down in the paint. Got a nice shiny finish on it. 
Again, get our copper wire, push out any excess paint that might be in that eyelet, just pluck it off the end of the wire and then pull it back through. So there you go, you've got a perfectly done jig, clean eyelet, and you're ready to bake in the next step. Let's take a, a little bit closer look now um, so you can really see and we'll actually do a two-step painting process. Um, with that, what we'll do, we'll take our jig and we'll heat it in the heat source. And see, I've got the fluid bed has my base color, just green pumpkin. That cup next to it there has a glitter effect. And that glitter effect um, is basically, I, I guess it would be a clear powder paint with just glitter in it. So we, when we get it nice and hot, we put it in the first paint. If it still looks shiny, it looks good. Just swish it through like I was talking about, like a bird in a bird bath. Just shake all the excess off, but just dip it quickly in the effect. Um, now, because you've done that, you've basically put two layers of paint on. So you need to be sure you get that eyelet cleared out because it's going to have a lot of paint in there. Um, so clear the eyelet out. But now I've got a nice looking green pumpkin jig head with orange fleck in it. Um, that's a color that I use a lot. Um, Again, you know, the, the key is to get the least amount of paint on the jig as you can because when we go to bake it, we don't want paint to drip and change the shape of the head and, and give us inconsistent look on the jig.